But there's a lot of people out there that think that we drill our bats, that we fix our bats. I need somebody to come up here and check these out. All right. I need that big dude right there in the middle. Yeah, come on up here, buddy. Oh, yeah. Come on up here, big man. Hey, brother. What's your name? Jack. What's your name? Jack. Jack? Oh, Jack. Were you in one of our school assemblies? Then you know what's coming. There's a lot of fine-looking women out there, brother. Woo! Jack, when somebody pulls you up on stage, that's what you got to do, man. You got to show them, guys. You got to stick out your chest. Yeah! Come on, do that again. That look good. Yeah! Woo! Now, Jack, in your deepest, your most manliest voice, you got to give me your name. So let's start over. Hey, brother, what's your name? Junk. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. Check those bats out, man. Make sure those don't have any cuts in them. Yeah, check the ends of them. Now, check right in here where they break. Make sure there's no screw holes or anything like that. Are those perfectly good bats, man? Yes. You guys give him a big round of applause. Thanks a lot, Jack. <laughs> All right. Then we're going to pop some cans, get everybody wet. Then, ladies and gentlemen, we have three two-by-fours. And we're going to have to clear the way. I barely made it through two two-by-fours Monday night. I come running at them as hard as I could. And when I hit them, they stopped me. That ain't good. Because I said I was going to run through three of them. I'm going to attempt to run through three of these two-by-fours tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And then, for a grand finale, we have an honorary member of the team. You're going to see Pastor Farrell Hardison. Oh, yeah. This man can preach a three-point sermon in less than five hours. We call him the Sermonator. You're going to see Pastor Farrell come up here, and we are going to see if he can break as many bricks as we start out with on Sunday. How many guys think he can do it? All right. All right. Mitch Hodge is going to take a jail cell size bar. He's going to attempt to bend this thing around. But can I be honest with everybody in here? These feats of strength won't do anything for you guys. They won't do anything to change your life. But let me tell you what will. Let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says by the blood of the Lamb. You know, when I was growing up, I didn't know. I grew up in church, guys. I was in church every time the church doors were open. My friends used to say the only drug problem I had is my mom drugged me to church all the time. I was in church my whole life, but I did not know what that meant. I did not know what the blood of the Lamb meant. So let me explain it to you out there if you don't know. The blood of the Lamb. What Jesus Christ did on that cross. Jesus Christ was 100% man and he was 100% God. He was wrapped in flesh. He walked on this earth. He had no sin in his life. They took him to a horrible Roman crucifixion. They massacred my Savior with not one sin in his life, but it had to be that way. It had to be that way because he had to be the perfect sacrifice for our sin. And sacrifice he did. They took him to a Roman crucifixion. They hung him on that cross and they placed him in a borrowed tomb. But on the third day, hey, he didn't stay there. He rose again and he stands in heaven. And with his blood and sacrifice, he washed my sins away. And I stand before you today, a new creation in Christ. Because I have received Jesus Christ. And you can too. It's a free gift. Praise God for the blood of the Lamb, the sacrifice that Jesus made. But then, in Revelations, it says, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Guys, there's no by coincidence that those two things are right next to each other. You know, there is power in your testimony. There is power in what God has done in your life. I had a young lady come up to me one time and she said, hey, I don't have a testimony like you guys. I haven't been through all that stuff. I got saved early on. I've been to church my whole life. I said, oh, hold on, girl. Wait a minute now. You've got the best testimony of all time. God's keeping power. Amen? Young people, you don't have to go through all the junk that some of us hardheads have to go through. This is the greatest testimony you can ever have. Being raised in the church and receiving Jesus at a young age. But you know what? Not all of us are fortunate enough to go down that road. Mike Fontenot gave his testimony in the prison today. He is the best prison speaker I have ever heard in my entire life. He ministered to those men in that prison today. Amen. 
Guys, how many of you would like to hear the powerful testimony of a man that spent half his life behind bars? Give it up for Big Mike Fontenot. Yeah, it's really awesome being in the house of the Lord tonight. This is what it's all about. It's for me to give it away of what I received. It's so cool. It's so awesome. 18 years of my life incarceration of gangs, violence, and the things that I did in life is because I never knew what real love was all about. I never did. But it was so cool, you know, how you find out things to get your attention is what God will give you. And one day, He will get your attention. That's what's so beautiful about it. That I don't get in a bad mood or upset from the past history of what I went through. Because the impact in it is what I received from it. That renewed me and shaped me and molded me into the man that God wanted me to be. And it's so cool, you know, after 18 years of incarceration, gangs, violence, prison, jail, institutions. But it was on that third time, the last time that when I went in, that I heard about a man and what he did for me. A man. And then when the brother started talking about the crucifixion of Christ, what he did for me is when I hit my knees. And for a long, long time, I never cried. And tears fell from my eyes. That's the day that I accepted Jesus. And from then on, after that last three years there, that I studied to show myself approved, a word that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth taking it to heart to renew my mind and shape me into the man that God wanted me to be. Why? Because of what I learned in there is for me to give to my mama and my daddy and my brothers and sisters and my friends. I was the only one out of five that got off into a zone in an area like that. They couldn't figure out why I was doing things like this or what was going on. But the impact was is so powerful that as I see, see my grandma She'd be praying all the time, and I'd ask her, who are you praying to? And she'd tell me, Lord Jesus. And I'd always see this until finally when I got locked down and I found out who Jesus was, and as I started studying the Word, that's when I understood where Grandma was coming from because the peace that surpassed all understanding fell upon me. And in other words, it was one-on-one, me and Jesus. The power of the Holy Spirit was dwelling upon me in my room, in my dorm, behind them cold, hard bars of steel. And for three solid years, as I sat there, I started learning the word. I started learning how to pray and ask my father, believing, have no doubt within me. Standing strong because I felt his presence all the way within me. I seen the happiness and the joy and love coming out my mouth. All the slang and all the cussing and all that other stuff vanished. He put my lips to the silence of the language like that. Tell me that ain't an awesome God. And I started praying in these areas in the Word of God and what He brought upon my life. And I started asking Him, Father God, because at this moment, it's one of the first wives divorced because she's with another man. And I had two baby girls that I already put through bad extreme in life because they seen what their daddy was like. And I never hardly seen him much at all. And when she wrote that letter, I said, so be it. You come into adultery, if that's what you want, so be it. Because I'll be in here a long time. And she did so. So therefore, I knew what my father was about in his word. And he said, ask. And as I talked to God, I asked him, Father God, send me a woman, pure at heart, never been touched. And I said, Father God, I ain't never been to have seen your kingdom. Your loving world that we live in today, I've never been able to see. Because I was always locked down. I want to see your nation, Father. And I left it at that. And it was so cool. So be it. I had about five months left. To do out of that three years that last time. And as I started seeking the word so much more, set more on fire for God than anything else. When they told me, Mike Fondle, pack your bags, your ATW, I was out of there. I got into fire rescue, started helping saving.